Would you enjoy that? Then why don't you come on? They're all going to have microphones, and we're going to start off with a few questions. Derwin, why don't you start out on the piano over there? And uh, I'm going to have you sing here pretty quick. Fact is, why don't we start off with that? Get us warmed up. You can use, you want to use my mic? Hallelujah. How many of you know he's worthy? Come on, put your hands together for him if you know that he's worthy of all of our praise. Hallelujah. Time is like a river ever running to the sea. Each day it takes with it part of your dream. I don't want to spend my time here chasing vanity. Lord, that's why I'm down here on my knees. I want to go I want to reach farther, I want to climb higher than I've ever been before. Don't let me grow older without growing closer, with all my heart, I want to know you more. Come on, sing it with me.
uh, questions. They've passed out cards. Please write them down. You can ask anybody on the panel anything you want, and they have the right not to answer if they don't want to. Praise God. But uh, let's start. David, do we have questions? Yes, we do. This question is, I guess, for musicians and leader, worship leaders, but as a musician, how do I help people get into worship? How do I help it flow? Wendell? This is Mr. Wendell Lowe on the organ over here. <laughs> Wendell? Go ahead and say that again. I think he wasn't expecting me to direct it to him. The how do question, we help people get in the flow of worship as a musician? As a musician, how do I help people get into worship? How do I help it flow? Well, for one, you as a musician must first get in the presence of God before you can usher in anyone else. And with your life, be prepared to sense the flow of the house, the anointing of the house, the resident anointing that is in the house, and what is supporting the vision of the house, what's going on in that house. When you play skillfully, as well as the anointing on your life, it will be a tremendous help, not only to the man of God, but to those who are in musical leadership of that ministry. Does that answer? Amen. <laughs> Miss Lisa? Okay, this question is for Aaron. If my church wants to make a CD, what are the steps I should take in getting started? Uh, well, first of all, I think Jaron can probably help me out with this a little bit too, because he's done this a lot more than I have. But um, I think the most important thing is to find out where you are song-wise. I think the songs are very, very important, and I think the songs, if it's a church project, songs have to be a part of what your church is about. I mean, if your church is dedicated to soul winning, you need to have some soul winning songs. I think everybody ought to have a soul winning song, especially. I mean, if you don't have a soul winning song, what are we doing? It's like pastor's been saying all week, what are we doing? I think the most important thing is the songs. I mean, the songs are the key to a Christian album in particular because it's about inspiration. It's like what Jaron said this morning. You know, we are inspirational people. Our job is to inspire people to want to have what we have. And I mean, if we're Christians, we should, we should act like Christians, you know? And I think also too, I, here's the biggest problem I have with Christian music. When people ask me what I think about Christian music today. I think the biggest problem with Christian music is we are too afraid of change. Don't shout me down now. But I think the biggest problem is, is people have done it the same way they've done it for 30 years. And you can't, you can't reach this generation with what you did 30 years ago. I think the biggest thing is we've got to change with the world. We are supposed to be the light. Not the world, the world is not the light, we are the light. And we are supposed to be on the cutting edge. All that stuff out there in the world, all of that stuff, we should be doing first, not five years later when the fad's gone away. And that's the biggest problem I've had with record companies is I think that the biggest problem with record companies today in the Christian music industry is that one, they're too afraid of change, and second of all, it takes a record company that has no money to promote an artist that could be something huge, that has something to say to the world. And they put every dime that they have into that, and they blow up, and they cross over into mainstream, it happens, then what happens? Christian music jumps onto that, and they do that for 15 years. And I think the biggest thing is, is like Pastor Joni said this morning, we have to be trailblazers. And I think the biggest thing is, is to ask God for creativity. Ask God for your inspiration. He's the inspiration, not us, not our skill. I mean, I know great people who have no anointing at all. They sell thousands of records, but they have no anointing. Um, Joni Parsley's session this morning, don't, don't pray about it. Get the DVD. 
Um, because I, I think one of the key things that she said that I think is key in what the question is, is motive. Why are you wanting to do a CD? Um, if you're wanting to do a CD because God has blessed you and you know that to whom much is given, much is required, and this is a way that we can be an outreach, then I say go for it. If you're wanting to do it because you think, well, if we do a CD, then maybe people will hear about us and we'll become big, then, then you're doing maybe the right things for all, all the wrong reasons. And, and in song selection, I think one of the, the, the key things is not only keeping your finger on the pulse of what is happening musically, and listen to me, none of that belongs to the devil. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from So if the devil has it, it means he stole it. Let's go take it back. Bring it back to the church. And too often we want people to drive the latest cars, have the latest cell phones, have the latest computers, have every single new gadget, wear the latest fashions, and walk into church and step back 50 years in time. It cannot happen. But here's the deal. You have to, as Joni said this morning, keep your finger on the pulse of your church. Because a good buddy of mine, Bill Gaither, who has really had a lot of impact in, in the in the Christian world and the music world, he, he told me one time, a long time ago, don't write songs that answer questions nobody's asking. <laughs> and, and you need to make sure that what you are doing is touching the lives of the people in your house and in your community and make sure that whatever it is you're doing, give it the best you've got, but make sure that it's relevant to where you are so that you can say it's having an impact. David, what is the best way to extend worship in a congregational setting to a congregation that is only accustomed to singing a congregational song and then stopping? Eddie, why don't you answer? Ooh. <laughs> What's the best way? First of all, I think it starts with the worship leader because worship is not a song. Oh, come on. That. We've reduced worship services to a set of songs. Too fast, a medium too slow. Now he's preaching and ain't nobody saying amen in here. And worship is not a, a set of songs. In all actuality, a good worship leader can take one song. In fact, a good worship leader can stand on the pulpit and lift his hands. And worship takes place if that worship leader understands who his God is. So... And I have to say this, being a worship leader for many years, that, and I've been privileged to have this, that you have to have a worshiping pastor as well as a worshiping worship leader. It cannot be preliminary. It cannot be we only do this just to see, you know, buy some time. Your pastor has to worship. Your, your praise team has to worship. Your musicians have to worship. Beyond the music, okay, one of the things that blessed me last night was when the dance team was coming in. They came in shivering and shaking. They came in with a praise all over them to the point where they almost couldn't even perform. Okay? I think sometimes we have to have 60 verses and tight grooves when in Solomon's temple, the lyrics were very simple. For the Lord is good, and his mercy endures forever. At that moment, the house was filled with a cloud. To such a degree that the priest could not stand to minister. By reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. So if you really want 
your people to worship. Let them see you broken. Let them see tears stream down your face. And let them see that it's not the song, but it's what your heart communicates to the heart of the Father that you're so in love with. And music is just a vehicle. And who gives a rip about the vehicle? Nobody gets in a vehicle to stay in the vehicle. You get in the vehicle so it can take you to a destination. Oh. And that destination is the presence of the Lord. And we have worshiped the vehicle. We have shouted over the vehicle. We have danced over the vehicle. And we have forgotten that the Lord is good. Not the song, but the Lord is good. Shut up. His mercy endures forever. Just look at those hands and just worship. Look at this world, silver and it's gold. But there's only one place my soul longs to go. That's my heart's desire Cause in your presence is where I want to hide In your presence is where I want to And I will bow down and worship you
without you. I can't live without you. You're where I want to be. You're where I want to be. The desire of my heart is to be where you are. Where I want to be. Take me there. Just say that. The desire of my heart, the desire of my heart, is to be where is you to be are. Where you are, it's where I want to be. Come on, just lift up your hands and say that one more time. The desire of my heart is to be. Hallelujah. Don't you just love his presence? Hallelujah. Don't you just love his presence? Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for that interruption. Spirit of the living God, we thank you for your presence. Hallelujah. You may be seated. <laughs> Hallelujah. Questions? Yes. Or you just want to lay down? <laughs> oh, praise the name of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of God. Amen. Lisa, are you out there? Do we have a question? Yes, this is to you and staff. How do you plan for your song service? Who picks the song? What actually goes into the planning and the detailing of that? Uh, our, the way we have to do things is different than, than you would do them because th we have a whole lot of planning for uh, different things, namely TV, uh, our production uh, regiment on Sunday morning is quite extensive uh, to get TV, sound, lights, all of that to come together. Uh, it, you know, it takes days of, of planning and, and putting effort into, and so we actually know what we're doing on Sunday, on Tuesday afternoon. So we sat down as a music staff on Tuesday afternoon, and we, we make plans for that Sunday. And those lists of songs come many different ways. Uh, a whole lot of times, and Stephanie and I are very much, uh, you know, though I'm out here, uh, I, I don't run the music department here. She does. And, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm out here and you see me, you know, directing the music and you, and you think that I, I run this, but I don't. She does. And so a lot of times, um, though it's me doing the leading, a whole lot of you know, the administration uh, comes from her. And so we sit down as a team, and they come a whole lot of different ways. And uh, sometimes I, I feel like these songs, and a whole lot of times the songs uh, come from what it is that our services have been, uh, you know, whatever the services have been calling for uh, lately. And so, and we write and try to write a large percentage of the music that we do here because we believe this sound has a house. I mean, this house has a sound. This sound has a house. This house has a sound. You, and your house has a sound. We have a voice, and we very much try uh, to, we, we try to be like a stamp on the word that pastor's bringing forth. We try to support, be that support, that voice behind his voice reverberating the very same message that's coming forth from him and it was wonderful the 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 cd that we just came out with called it's because of you and actually eddie wrote the title track uh that song that i did last night 
Every time I lift my hands, it's because of you. And, um, and, uh, and he also wrote the song that we did last night, the one I did, we did a while ago, Lion of Judah. And so I, I, I do all his music. I, I call him on the phone and say, what have you written? Send it to me. And uh, I just you see the spirit. And more, that's what comes out in his music. And that's what I love the heart that he has to work and if you ever saw him lead praise and worship you think i sweat there is nobody that sweats he's a professional sweater and uh but but we you know i i don't know that you would you know but uh, we do things lots earlier because there's a whole lot of dominoes in our in our world and uh, so we have to do things a whole lot earlier. And those lists of music go so many different places. Uh, if you, on the back console back there, there's a lighting technician. The lighting technician gets the list. And on those lists are so many cues, meaning that in those songs, they don't know by the name of the song what kind of song or what, how, or what the energy of the song is or what the lighting direction should be. So we, we have to give them those kinds of cues. Same thing for sound. And, and so we have, to, we have to plan much earlier than you might have to. But uh, it's a group effort, and it doesn't just come from me. Uh, Stephanie is a large part of that. Lisa is a large part of that as well all of that planning. Did I answer that question? Amen. Thank you. Brother David. There you are. Some members of our team, this is from our worship leader, some members of our team always want to do a certain style of music which invoke a certain response. I feel pressure as a leader to go with the pressure. Help. I'll let Brother Derwin answer. Well, number one, um, as the leader, you have to be the one that sets the direction of the entire program. You, 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 can't, you can't allow, uh, I mean, it's, it's one thing to ask for input, it's one thing to get feedback, and there's place for that, there's, there's place for dialogue, there's place in your private music meetings, worship leader, staff, team meetings, whatever, for you to get appropriate feedback, get input. But the bottom line is, as the worship leader, it's your call in submission to the pastor, in relationship with the pastor. As long as you're on the same page with the pastor, uh, it's, it's, it's your call to set the direction uh, with appropriate feedback, but you can't allow, you can't bend to the pressure of people who want it a certain way. You've got to make that call and you've got to uh, make that decision uh, in conjunction with your pastor. Um, I want to add one thing to that. And our pastor has been preaching the last couple nights on preachers preaching for the response of the people. And I want you to know that that's not just in preaching. Uh, it's very popular in music nowadays, and I, I want us to be careful because as praise and worship leaders, if we sing for the response of the crowd, then we're doing it for the wrong reason. Uh, that's a lot of times why our people can't enter into real worship, because we're so inhibited by their response. And uh, brother, actually, Sister Judy Jacobs yesterday in her class, she said to inhabit is to lock him in. And a lot of times what we need to do when we step out here is to be locked in to him because their response will follow that. And if, if we get caught up in that, it's the same thing that he's been preaching. It's like Miss Joni said today, sometimes I think we need to have Oscars or Emmys in the church of God for best performance by a preacher or by a singer. This is not a performance. It is about bringing glory to him. And pastor's been saying, may the lamb that was slain receive the reward of his suffering. Why do we sing? To create an atmosphere that is conducive to seeing souls won. And that's what it's all about. Miss Joni said today, if you could care less about picking up a microphone, then you're in the right place. Okay? 
because that's not what it's about. If I'm not touching you, if I'm not reaching you, then we're in it for the wrong reasons. I heard a statement um, not too long ago that really, really impacted me, and it said, you say what you know, but you reproduce what you are. And one of the downsides of talent, one of the downsides of creativity is a natural tendency towards self-centeredness. And people who are creative, people who are gifted, have a tendency to have everything be all about them. And we, when things are bad, creative people, it's not just bad. It's horrendously horrible. When things are good, they're not really good. They're phenomenally, brilliantly fantastic. Now, the, the problem with that is when we like something, everybody knows we like it. When we don't like something... Now, the problem is if the, if the problem starts here, it will spread to here. The, because spirits are contagious. And so what happens is, as a pastor's son all my life, and having been involved in church ministry all my life, I have seen this little demon stick its head up because there are people in the choir, people on the praise team, people in the band, whatever, that if you're singing the song they like, you've never had a better participant. And, and I've seen it from all ends of the spectrum, from contemporary to southern gospel to classic. So, so this demon doesn't have any preference over style. If you're singing their style, they love it. If you're not singing their style, I, I just personally don't care for that. And then not only sometimes are they not content to give you 100%, they want to make sure that their buddies or their cronies in the audience know that they don't particularly care for this style of music, so it'll be... And what I have to understand is, if I believe that God put the man over the house, and if the man over the house put the man over the department, then I have to understand that my gift, regardless of how phenomenal I think my gift may be, it is in subjection to the man. Anything with more than one head is a monster. That's true whether it's a church or a department or whatever. And so what I have to understand is, if I give you 100% on what I like, and don't give you 100% on something I don't care for, I'm saying several things. Number one, I'm saying, I don't really believe you're the authority. I don't really believe pastor's the authority. I believe I'm smarter than all of y'all. and I'll... So I'm not being submissive. And then I'm also saying, I don't really give a rip about the needs of people out here. I don't care who's got a need. I don't care what God wants to do. All I care about is me and then thirdly if I'm going to do that I might as well stop at Walmart on the way home and buy a candle and a Ouija board and invite my friends over for a seance tonight at midnight and some of you some of you would be shocked at the thoughts of buying a Ouija board I'd never do that but you'll rebel and withhold your talent the Bible says that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And so there has to be an understanding that whatever's going to happen is not about me. It's not about what the, the most popular person wants, but it's about what are the needs of the people and what does the person who has been placed as the authority over this say and me submitting myself, not 99%, 100% to their leadership. Look at who has joined us. Oh, hallelujah. I like you. I don't even know who you are, but I like you. 
excuse the way I'm dressed. He wrote, you wrote Holy Grail? You're kidding. You did? I like you too. I, I meant to tell you this morning, but you know, we've traveled with Miss Parsley and she only has one prerequisite. She only asks one question to go on the road with her. Do you know Holy Ground? Because if you don't, you can't travel with Miss Parsley. <laughs> I love this lady. <laughs> we have to do a service together. Yeah. As I was sitting there and I was listening to her, I, I was thinking, and her heart's so pure, and she's so anointed, and I just told John, she needs to start preaching on Wednesday night some. There's a gift in her belly beyond that. But anyway, I was sitting there thinking what the minstrel is, and that's what you are. You're not songwriters. You're not musicians. You're minstrels. And the Bible says two or three things about that. Number one, when the minstrel played, the evil spirits departed. <laughs> well, my God, I feel something in this house. It's called the Holy Ghost. And you see, your fingers will say as much or more than the prophet does. When you play on those keys and that reverberates the air, demons will fly if you're full of the Holy Ghost. When she stands up here and opens her mouth, her tongue is as a ready rider. It's running the demons out of the house. Why is it doing that? Did you ever ask yourself why it's doing that? Because the Bible says the minstrel, the music is not for you. It's not for you. It's not to minister to you. It's not to move you. It's not to sock you up or down. It has nothing to do with culture, black, white, yellow, or whatever. See, you didn't even know that. But when they sang holy ground for me, the, that anointing that was in you, that gave you that, spreads out there and drives the demons out. Why? So I can stand and declare the word of God so the sick can be healed, the dead can be raised, sinners can come to God. Are you hearing me? It's something called the anointing. And it has to be upon the minstrels. When they stand out here, first according to the scripture, correct me if I'm wrong, you're supposed to be out here singing not for yourself, not playing for yourself, not moving a crowd. You don't even supposed to see the crowd. The Bible says you are ministering ah, so that the priests can minister. You're clearing the way first for the Spirit of God. See, we thought it's for the preacher first. It's not for the preacher first. The preacher can't do anything unless he comes. You're clearing the way for the high priest of our ministry. You're clearing the path. You're moving the demons out of the way. You're moving the spirits out of the way. That's infiltrated in the house. So Jesus, man God, so the Holy Ghost can come down and he can move upon the, the man or woman of God that's got to declare the word of God. And if when you make way for him, then he will infiltrate him or her. Then we don't have to struggle to preach. The way has been cleared. The demons are already fleeing. We don't have to stand here. I bind every spirit except the Holy Ghost. You see, when I go out to minister, before I minister, I stand and I'll say, I bind every spirit in this house except the Holy Spirit. Why do I do that? I'm not sure the minstrels behind me has done their job. It's not about music. It's not about songs. It's about clearing the path, the war path. We're in a warfare. There's a time of peace and there's a time of war, and we're in a warfare. And it's the minstrel's job to go ahead of us and clear the path so that we 
can declare the word of God. Oh! I need a hanky. I'm supposed, I'm supposed to be picking out towel. <laughs> You come in a place with the devil. You think the pastor's going to get it out? The prophet, the man or woman of God. If you've done your job, it can't stand. Saul was full of rebellion. He was full of witchcraft. But when Dave, oh God, I didn't need a prophet. He didn't need a preacher. He needed a minstrel. And when he started to play, my Bible tells me the evil spirits didn't fight with him. They didn't quarrel with him. But when those notes started to infiltrate the air, the evil spirits departed. They ran in terror. And we sit out there, like he said, I don't like that song. You don't even know what it said. <laughs> Are you understanding me? God didn't give us minstrels for us. They are for him. So that this place is sanctified before the man or woman starts and stands here and opens the undefiled word of the living God so that it can penetrate what it's supposed to do. And let me tell you, in this revival that's already started, we're going to have sold out men and women of God. That understand Like little Amanda, she was going to leave not long ago. And she said, I don't know. And God was just trying her heart, and I knew he was. I said, what about, you know, God's really using you. You've been sent all over the world. And she cried like, like her mother had died. She said, Miss Parsley, none of that means anything to me. I just want to. To be at his feet. We can't blame them. We made them what they are. Because of our demand upon them. Yet we bring our lost loved ones. Full of the devil. But we... We don't want them to do what they're supposed to be doing. We want them to entertain us till the preacher gets up. And then we believe the preacher that he'll preach with the convicting power of God and perhaps they'll get saved. No. When devil a window just strikes a note, the convicting power should hit them. Because the very air See, I'm hearing it. And I recognize it. It's the anointing. Oh, God. See? But we gotta wait for the preacher to make us anointed. He can't. He can't do that. He can't. You don't have to make loud. Maybe it's soft. But see, we've trained our people. If it's loud and we're dancing and we're jumping and we're bucking, God's moving this way. But see, the prophet couldn't recognize him in the earthquake. He couldn't recognize him in fire. But see, 
I saw him turn when I heard that. Did you feel it? It's just standing on him. Why? Because just those notes after happening. And something's happening. And right now, see, if you could open up your spirit and let the anointing from those notes, oh God, I understand that the Holy Ghost He'll cleanse your life right now. He'll take all of this craziness that's been ingrained in you, out of you. You shouldn't come in to be entertained. Someone to, I hate the phrase, lead me in praise and worship. I can't lead you in praise and worship. I can create an atmosphere that you can enter into the praise and worship. You can't even get into worship without an invitation from the Holy Ghost. You can get in the outer court. But let me explain something to you, honey. You have to be invited in by the Holy Spirit into the Holy of Holies. It's by invitation only. Oh, God. By invitation only. Because you have to come through the blood and you have to come through purification in order to enter into worship. We talk about worship. Worship is truly entering into the Holy of Holies. I guess that's why I love when Donnie comes. He may be late. <laughs> Normally is. But I've never saw him walk up on a platform. He's already come through the outer court. And he's ready to step into the inner court and let you see worship. Oh God. We need to repent for what we've asked our minstrels to become. These are gifts from God to drive out demon hordes so we can come on through the outer court and bow at his feet in the Holy of Holies. And let me tell you, when this happens, and it's happening, because we're getting purity back into the pulpits, purity back into our minstrels, then men and women will hit the back door and maybe people like David and these will just be playing quietly like this. Maybe they'll be revving that organ high and loud, storming the gates of hell. But men and women will walk through those back doors and grab their stomachs and run to an altar. You say, you got scripture for that? Yeah. The priest wasn't able to minister by reason of the glory. You know where the glory come from? Study your Bible. It came from the minstrels. It came from the minstrels. I love you all. And I pray God keeps you pure. It's easy. The giftings he's given you, it's easy to be. God, I pray keeps you pure. You will never know because of that song. David, David knows how many people came to Bible college. Because I refused to do a Bible college meeting without that song. How many people came to an altar because of that song? And I don't 
say that they exalt you. I say that to humble you. How many demons left because of that song? And if you can't sing and you're not gifted to, for God's sake, sit down. The Bible says those who are skilled, those who are willing to practice, those who are willing to fast and to pray. So if you're out there and you're in the music department and you're like me, you sing off key and you clap in the middle, go sit down. <laughs> Did you know what? No, no, no. no, no, no. I, I love... I can't do anything without talking about giving. Did you know financial prosperity only follows you when you're walking in the gift that God called you to do? Some of you preachers wonder why your church is so desperately poor. My pastor said last night, you're supposed to be serving somewhere else, but you want to be the head hot show. Financial prosperity only follows you when you're operating in the gift and calling that God called you to. I didn't mean to do this. What time do you have to leave? Well, I, I want him to sing it. Okay. I want us to join hands all over, all across the aisles. Jaron, would you be so kind as to sing Holy Ground for Miss Parsley? What she's been talking about is the fact that when we begin to sing as unto him, we discover that in his presence there is joy beyond all measure. And the good news that we can tell people is at his feet, peace of mind can still be found and let me remind you of a promise of God if you have a need I know he has every answer all you gotta do is reach out and claim it for you are standing on a holy ground. Sing it together. We are standing. Yes, we're standing on holy ground. This is holy ground. Holy ground, and I know that there are angels, they're all around. Ooh. So let us pray. Come on, somebody pray. Jesus, now.
Father, that you would take us and with your hand inside us move us like puppets. Holy that the power of your spirit would accompany each and everything we do. Father, that when we lift our hands, we do it under the anointing. When we lift our voices, we do it under the anointing. That when we stand in front of our congregations, that we are transparent and all you see is the cross of Jesus. Let your spirit move. Let your glory move. When we lift our hands to you, let them be clean from the things of this world. Let us be spotless before your throne. Just lift your hands right now and glorify. Tell him, Lord, cleanse me. Cleanse me from myself. Cleanse me from my pride. Cleanse me in your presence. Oh, God, I pray. I give you praise for it. I give you praise that at the sound of my voice, demons flee. That when I lift my voice in praise, Father God, it confuses the adversary. I give you, oh, God, when I give you praise, that your spirit begins to flow. In the name of Jesus, that the bonds of sin are broken and that you, you, you are exalted on high and given the glory. Now put your hands together and give him praise right now. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Listen, this is in my spirit tonight. There is going to be an explosion in this room. And you don't have much time to get ready for it. 